Okay, as many of you have probably seen the video before that shows how to go through setting up the icon fly barless controller in this basic menu. Uh, that video will get you through most of the basic stuff and get a general set of, of settings ready for you. And for most users, will be just good. But if you want to change your settings a little bit more, do some tweaking and fine tuning, you can come up here to view and go down to advanced. The first tab here for common has a list here of a couple different things that you can do tweaks to. Uh, the first one here, receiver, when you go through the basic setup, most of this is already gonna be good to go. If you need to make any tweaks, you can actually view it from here. But this is actually the same thing that you see in the basic setup. And those channels should be aligned properly if you've gone through it the correct way in the basic setup. I wouldn't recommend coming in here and changing uh, whatever these channels are unless you really know exactly what you're doing and you're doing some custom stuff. So for the most part, you're not going to want to mess with this after you've done the basic setup. Orientation, same thing. You can change the orientations, but you should definitely know exactly what you're doing. So you can see if you hover over it, it gives you a little explanation there. Here, select the correct sensing axis and direction for each function, but you're going to probably leave that again the way it was after the basic setup. For servos, now this is one page that is very useful. Uh, the frequencies that you've set up for your servos should be set after going through the main menu. Uh, if you don't know, make sure that you're setting up the correct frequencies to match your servos. What I like to do here though is uh, with the neutral, positive, and negative throw, you can actually set, level out your swash plate at full positive and full negative and at mid stick. So what I like to do is after I go through the basic setup and try to get it as good as possible, come in here, use the swash plate leveler, zero stick, I make sure everything neutral is set to where it's perfect, go full positive, and then I use the positive throw on those servos to change that and then go full negative, and then use the negative throw to change that. And then that way I have a level swash plate at full positive. Make sure it's perfectly level at zero degrees pitch at neutral, and make sure that it's level at negative as well. You also have a drop-down selection here where you can select the uh, frame rate or the frequency for that servo. Uh, but again, that's going to be set probably during your basic setup. Uh, here on the CCPM, you can actually change uh, your your geometry. Uh, again, this is probably going to be set up perfectly after you've gone through the basic. But if you have some sort of strange geometry that you need to mess with, or if your phasing is off, you can change the phasing here. Uh, after you measure your phasing, you can you can get that to match. Uh, if you check this, it changes the phasing, but then you can't actually see it. But when you go like this, you can see it actually changing in the geometry picture down here at the bottom. So again, you probably won't want to mess with that. Here we've got mixers and little pop-up windows that will explain what's going on here. If you have swash plate binding or something, you can actually come in here and and change the mixers, uh, but make sure again you know what you're doing and change it just a little bit at a time here. So next one is the governor. S all of these settings, the basic ones uh, here, gear ratio, all of that stuff. Uh, Chris Sexton put out a video explaining these two values. It's basically setting the endpoints on your governor. Uh, you might be fine with just whatever the default values are, but if you need to do some fine-tuning, uh, you can go in there and do that. The speeds for your three-head speeds are set over here. Gains. Now we've got the proportional, integral, and derivative gains. Again, these pop up here with little bubbles that explain how these gains work. What I recommend that you do is use the default settings at first if you're using your governor and everything. And if you're noticing that it's too slow, you might want to bump the gain up. And if you're noticing that your tail is bouncing around too fast in hard maneuvers, then you may want to turn some of these gains down. Read these and get to know how P, I, and D values affect a control system. Uh, you can go look up that on Google and just try to get some information about how to set these. 
what we find generally is default settings, the eye gain might be a little bit high, so you can pump the eye gain down a little bit. Uh, and then we've also got these three values down here, the pitch, cyclic, and tail gain. So these gains can actually add a certain amount of uh, throttle during your pitch and cyclic move maneuvers to change any overspeeding or underspeeding happening in your head. Uh, the spool up here, uh, how fast you ramp up, right here, how fast you ramp down, uh, how fast you spool up during a soft start, dead zone, this is for if you're getting a large delay or something when you're engaging the, the throttle, uh, you may have to crank this up or down a little bit, uh, but you want to make sure that your min and max are set correctly. Watch Chris's video on how to do that. He goes on into some great detail about setting up the governor and all of these specific functions in his video. And then the sensor here, just like in the basic menu, it shows you if it's engaged or not. This is bouncing around because I'm in the de demo mode right now. These other tabs up here, you have, see, so setup one, two, and three. So those match basically the, the banks that you have. So for each one, you have the same uh, values, the input, the tail, the cyclic, and the gov and stability. So for the input, the stick dead band, I think what you want is as low as possible, but without twitching in your servos. I think sometimes uh, at center stick you could get some twitching, and if that's happening, you can crank this up a little bit. Um, the newer digital uh, higher grade servos, you can probably have whatever the default value is or, or have that as low as possible. Exponentials here, uh, traditional exponential values. Uh, if you don't know how those work, just do a little bit of research on those basically. Uh, we'll kind of make it so that around center stick, it's a little bit softer. Uh, so you've got the values for your elevator, your tail, your pitch. I like to stick with the default values. I think those are 20. Um, don't remember for sure. But if, if you're finding that you want a little bit more control around center stick, you can turn those exponential values down. So you don't want to add exponential in your controller. It's already added here. Uh, this is where you change those. Tail dynamic, this is kind of about the tail stops. Like when your tail is stopping too hard, it could be a little bit hard on your mechanics. So you can slow that down and soften it up a little bit with this value. Here in the tail, again, you've got some, some gain values, the I, D, and P. Sometimes you might have to turn the I gain down. You also have some cyclic pre-compensation. If you turn that on, this might be a useful thing. Uh, try it, crank it up, crank it down, don't change it too much. Just see if you get a good feel for it. Also, again, if you have questions about how these work, just hover over them and you'll get these little bubbles that will explain exactly how this stuff works. Uh, tail rotational speed and tail asymmetry. If you have some, you know, it's going fast in one direction, but slower in another direction in a pirouette, you can actually change that with this value. Uh, in the cyclic here, uh, these are all values that it basically the the gain values for your cyclic movements. Again, if you're finding a bunch of bouncing and oscillations, you may want to turn these down. Uh, if things are happening too slow, you may want to crank them up a little bit. Uh, elevator, looks like when you move these in the aileron, it'll try to match that with the elevator because generally if something's happening in the aileron, it's probably happening in the elevator too. So it looks like that's how you change those. They change together. Oh, okay, here, uh, with this button, there's if you have that engaged, they'll change together in a one-to-one. -one. But if you want like a one to point two to one ratio here, see this will crank up 1.2 times what the aileron is. So you may have to mess with that a little bit if you're getting a lot of bouncing and oscillations and that kind of stuff. Uh, this stuff here basically will affect how fast your cyclic is moving and agility will also uh, give it a, a overall helicopter flying characteristic uh, to make it more either natural or like a fly bar. And then govern stability, you can set up whether or not you want to use the governor or and if you want to use set up the bailout, this is the place to do it. You set up the governor bailout here. Uh, if you want to set up the auto level here and then there's also uh, some values here where you can make your auto bailout a little faster. So if you set up the gain, 
uh, and the angle. Uh, sometimes you need to offset if it's drifting one way or another, uh, and you don't want to re-level the helicopter. You can and do some adjustments here. And if you crank up this, that's the angle, the maximum angle it can use for correction. So if you turn that up, it'll also correct a lot faster for the stability. But it may also bounce around. Uh, so there's trade-offs here. Uh, don't want to make it too extreme, but if it's moving slow, maybe bump that up 5 or 10 degrees. See if it goes a little faster for you. And then again, you got these values for the different setups. So if you want to try uh, some values at once, uh, you know, change some values in one setup and then make them a little bit more extreme in the next setup uh, to see if you're going in the right direction. If you're not, change the val values in the other direction. And this way you can, you know, have a couple different setups that you can try while you're making adjustments and fine tuning your helicopter in between hooking up and making changes. Okay, and then just a quick overview of these menu, this menu here at the top. Uh, usually you're going to be a CCPM, uh, but there's different types of heads here, and then 140 degree CCPM for JR. Uh, that will essentially change uh, how the CCPM stuff is set up here by default. And this is for copying information from one bank to another. So you can, if you've gone through setup one, and you want to copy all the same parameters over to the other ones, you can copy it just to one, or you can copy it over to every single one. Uh, so if you find exactly what you like and you want all your switches to have those same parameters, find the setup you want, copy it to all the setups, then click copy, and then it'll copy all those parameters over, and then you're good to go. Okay, last thing, this little check mode, if you hover over here, it will give you a quick little explanation about what it is. It basically makes the dead band large uh, so that you can get center stick really easily and turns off all the gain values and everything so you can do mechanical setups uh, really easy. So sometimes it's pretty easy to come here and do the check mode and when you're going through the servos and setting all that stuff, it's, it's pretty helpful to do that. But make sure you come and you uncheck that. Usually I don't like to mess with it because it's really easy to forget and keep that checked and you don't want to fly a helicopter when it's in that mode. So that is the advanced menu in a nutshell. Uh, for much more details, you can, again, go over any of these, hover over it, and the little bubble will pop up and give you all of the details on it. But you can make everything a little bit faster, uh, uh, tweak things a little bit more to your personal liking. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, hit me up in the comments section, and I'll uh, chase down any answer that I can for you. Thanks.